I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Aegis Avenger Stalker, and we're starting right now. Aegis Combat Assist activated. Systems green. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Buyer's Guide. What's up, citizens? This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Aegis Avenger Stalker. And we'll compare those features amongst competing ships so you can make an informed buying decision. In this review, I'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, compare stats, review pros and cons, and finish up with my thoughts on the Aegis Avenger Stalker. If you haven't seen it already, after this review, check out my loadout guide for the Avenger Stalker in the info card above and on the end screen. Special thanks for all the support from patrons and channel members. It takes a while to make one of these and your support is greatly appreciated. If this is our first time meeting, welcome. My name is Subliminal and my passions are Star Citizen and content creation. Be sure to check out some of my other reviews in the series and consider subscribing. New citizens, use my referral link on screen and in the description to reserve your 5,000 Alpha UEC in the Persistent Universe. No pledge necessary. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Aegis Avenger Stalker is a civilian light fighter that is popular among bounty hunters. It was initially the frontline carrier for the UEE military. Then it had a long storied career as the standard patrol craft for the UEE advocacy. Utilizing its cargo hold for prisoner transport, the Avenger features a sturdy, reliable hull and the capacity for larger than expected engine mounts. Stalker is manufactured by Aegis Dynamics, a human spacecraft manufacturer based on Cestalus. Today, the company is a major manufacturer of both civilian and military crafts. The Avenger has three other variants, the EMP Warfare Warlock, the Base Light Cargo Hauler Titan, and the Titan's limited edition variant, the Renegade. As of today, the Stalker is for sale and upgrade on the Pledge Store for $60, and it is also available in the Avenger Stalker Starter Pack game package for $75. It is available to citizens who reach 25 referral points. Speaking of RP points, thank you guys for using and sharing my code. It saved me the cost of having to purchase this ship for this review. Because I know people will ask, the ships labeled in Arena Commander will appear in the Retrieval Console, but not in the RSI Hangar. And the Stalker is available for sale at Lorville's New Deal for over 880,000 Alpha UEC. Now that we know a little bit more about the Aegis Avenger Stalker, let's take a tour. On the nose, you'll notice the massive size 4 hardpoint with a gimbaled size 3 Gatling equipped. Above and to the right of this, we have direct access to the cockpit. Under the wings, we can see a gimbaled size 2 laser cannon and a pair of size 2 missiles. Walking around the winglets, we can see the blue accent lighting that I'm quite fond of. Around the back, we have the cargo hold. Other than a different pair of missiles, the starboard side is identical to the port side. Let's climb inside. The cargo hold of the Stalker trades its SCU cargo space for six holding cells. Past the cargo hold, you have the living quarters with a bed on the port side and some spaceship stuff on the starboard side. In between the living quarters and flight deck, there are some unmarked component houses. Let's head towards the flight deck. The Stalker does not have the new building blocks UI HUD just yet, but we should see that in the upcoming 3.10 patch. There are three MFDs and a 2D radar. The Stalker does feature an ejection system. 
and it has an exit straight from the flight deck. Now that we've taken a tour, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I've selected 10 ships, all of the pertinent Avenger variants, popular light fighters, and bounty hunting ships. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. The Avenger Stalker weighs in at over 50,000 kilograms and takes fifth place. It fits in at 23 meters in length and ties in fifth place with the Avenger series. It totes zero SCU of cargo and ties in last place with half the ships on this list. It has a max crew size of one and ties in last place with most of the ships on this list. It carries 583 quantum fuel units and ties in last place with everything except the Cuddy series. It cruises by with an SCM speed of 184 meters per second and takes seventh place. It blazes by with a max speed of 1307 and takes second place. It has a maximum pitch rate of 65 degrees per second and takes fourth place. It has a maximum yaw rate of 65 degrees as well and takes fourth place again. And it has a maximum roll rate of 120 degrees per second and ties in sixth place. It has a total hull HP of just over 6,000 and ties in sixth place. It shoots peas with a default pilot DPS of 908. It ties in last place. Check out my loadout guide to fix that. The Cuddy series are the only ships on this list with turrets. It slings Pooh with a combined missile payload of over 14,000 and takes ninth place. And the Avenger Stalker is available for sale in game for almost 900,000 alpha UEC and takes the second spot. This buyer's guide is brought to you by my locations of standing collection over on this plate. Any purchase made supports the channel and for every purchase, this plate will plant a tree in places that need it the most. Click the link in the description. All right, let's weigh some of the pros and cons. I would say its pros are obviously it's blazing fast max speed. Its pitch and yaw rates are decent. It has space to hold passengers and mission boxes. You can even store them in the prisoner cells to ensure they don't fall out. It has a bed to log out in, but in the current state of the game, when you come back in, you may be locked in the cabin. I CTD'd and had this happen. And I just waited a few minutes and the ship's doors became operational again. I just realized I was a prisoner in my own prisoner ship for a second. It has two exits for added flexibility. This is great if you need to get out of your ship in a hurry or get in from the front. It has great damage potential with the size 4 hardpoint on the nose, especially in 3.10 when fixed weapons become viable again. I would say its cons are, although its max speed is pretty fast, its SCM speed is quite low. This means if you travel over that speed, your coolers and thrusters will overheat sooner and cause degradation when that comes into the game. Furthermore, in the upcoming 3.10 patch, when the SCM speed will put the least amount of strain on your thrusters, you will be incentivized to stay under this speed to be the most effective in combat. Its missile payload is pretty disappointing with just four size two missiles. And if you're considering this for a starter ship, there's zero cargo space versus the base model Titan with eight SCU. All right, so Subliminal, what are your thoughts? I'll just get straight to the point. There is absolutely no reason to own this ship right now. When a player can profit from taking live bounties, it will be a totally different situation. Now, you may be wondering why I'm saying this when this ship is better than the Avenger Titan in almost every way except one. That is its lack of cargo space. And if you want to give that up to add to your combat abilities, then this would serve its purpose well. However, the reason why I don't think anyone needs to own this ship in the game's current state has nothing to do with the Stalker, but the next and final variant of the Avenger series, the Warlock. The Warlock has almost the same stats as the Stalker, but instead of losing the cargo space for currently useless prisoner cells, you can gain an EMP, adding a whole new dynamic to your gameplay. Now, when we have the full bounty hunting gameplay loop implemented into the game, the Stalker will be an awesome must-have ship if you want to get into that gameplay, especially if you don't want to break the bank. If you're outgrowing your combat abilities for your Avenger Titan, then take a look at the 325A. You will lose only 4 SCU of cargo, gain more amenities, keep the same type of firepower, and excel at every other speed and combat metric over the Titan. It's a win-win. Those are my thoughts, let me hear yours down in the comments. If you haven't already, check out my loadout guide for the Avenger Stalker here. New citizens, use my referral link on screen and in the description to reserve your 5000 Alpha UEC in the Persistent Universe. No pledge necessary. If you've enjoyed this review, check out more of my content. 
If you'd like, there are six ways to support the channel. Number one, you can smash that like button. Number two, you can share this content with someone who may enjoy it. Number three, you can check out my locations of Stanton collection over on Displate. Number four, you can subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the circle here. Number five, you can become a channel member by clicking the join button below. And number six, if you're feeling generous, consider becoming a patron. Some pledge perks can be seen here, including desktop versions of my locations of Stanton collection available to all patrons. If not, your viewership is greatly appreciated. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.